um, and the next one is the is the contested one. Um, so, would someone like to move that we further investigate alternative service provision of this facility? Tim Scandrett, second to Phil Clearwater. Um, and uh, is there some discussion? Yanni Johansson. I just want to ask a question about how realistic these savings are that we're expecting to get, and whether actually, if, if it, I, I support looking at um, trying to make this uh, rates neutral, I think we, we, we all would, but I can't see any reason why that couldn't be one of the options. So, so I just wanted to be clear, is, is that part of the consideration? Because what we heard from the submission was people saying, we think if council promoted it more, we think if council did some things differently, um, we could actually probably run it at a, as a cost neutral venue. And I just wanted to know whether, in terms of looking at alternative service provision, that's one of the options that can be included in the criteria. Um, in, in, in making the recommendation to, to the council, um, it, yeah, the, when, when people made submissions on this, they made it quite clear that what they valued about the centre itself uh, was the fact that it, um, it, 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 it ran on the sort of kind of good employer and it ran on the you know, fully um, qualified uh, you know, registered staff. Um, and as I understand it, um, there, has, there was a change in government policy a few years ago, so instead of continuing that um, move to 100% qualified staff, uh, it's now down to, I, I think it's about 80%, but I can't recall off the top of my head. So there was a, there was a, a, ser a step um, set of uh, arrangements across um, a 10 year period, I believe, where it, the, the, the intention was to get to 100% qualified staff. The, the community-based sector have committed to that, but the private sector have um, have committed to it where it's where where it you know where where they make the decision to do so, but legally they're not required to move there. So I believe that um, that it would be our responsibility to set the criteria um, based on what the feedback was in terms of the um, in terms of the people who use the centre. This is the last one that the council owns. We are not in the business of running early learning centres. That's not our function. It was our function when there weren't very many. When, and that's why they were originally attached to council facilities. Um, this is a good location for an early learning centre, but is by no means the only one in that area anymore. And, and that, that, to me, is where we have to make the separation between what we've done because we had a reason for doing it in the past and actually ask ourselves, is this the function for the council now um, and into the future? And I don't believe that people don't have access to early learning centres um, in, in Christchurch anymore that requires the council to kind of lead the way. So in fact, we've opted out of it. So no, I don't. I, I believe that this is actually asking us to investigate alternative service provision of this facility. So we don't want to close it down. Yeah. We want somebody else to run it, and we want to set the criteria around that. And it might be 100% trained um, registered staff, um, which certainly seemed to me to be the most important thing to the family families so, that presented to us. So in terms of a report coming back, which I presume this generates. What time frame and how realistic, given that you've obviously got some costs associated with a change of service provision, is it that we save $100,000 this year? It is the loss. That's the loss. Right. So if we, if we go down this track, we don't budget for a loss. Um, if we don't go down this track, we budget for a loss, as so, I understand it. So we go into a deficit, basically, if we haven't got an alternative provision or if the costs of changing the service are higher than the forecast loss, we still end up with a deficit. Yeah, zero. So, um, Peter, do you want to take us through that? Because that's dealt with on the other page as well. So the, the budget currently is break-even. Uh, it doesn't traditionally break even, it usually runs at a loss. So budget, um, budget impact of retaining um, you would see as zero. 
um, but to actually achieve that zero would create would, would require quite a change in performance, um, perhaps along the aspects that Councillor Johansson has mentioned. So uh, what we've uh, assumed, and that's later down in, in Appendix F, is that uh, we are either outsourcing, so there's no budget impact, or if it's not being outsourced, that we make uh, the savings to avoid the $100,000 loss. That's traditional. Mm. It's a bit like the, the corporate expenses that we've had with the, the restructuring. So when you when you change something, there's a change cost associated to it. And that's really what I'm trying to understand. So if, if it's, I mean, I presume you can't just shut something down without any cost. There has to be a cost associated. We're not going to gonna shut it down. We'll that isn't one of the options. Oh, okay. Phil. Well, actually, I'm supporting the recommendation, particularly because I guess the cost, which is like a subsidy, you know, it has to really be addressed, especially on an ongoing basis. And and I have, in terms of criteria being set by the council, it's really clear that those criteria can potentially include, like the community-based sector, as as potentially being able to run this too. And to me, that seemed to be a good compromise. I understand where the, the um, people who made the submissions were coming from very clearly, but I think it has to be workable and, and affordable for ratepayers as well. Thank you. Um, this is not the only one that we're actually subsidising. There are, in fact, if you look at tomorrow's grants applications, there are nine other preschools that we still pay the rent on, um, which is intriguing, uh, given the massive change in early childhood and uh, early learning centres and their funding from the Ministry of Education over the last 10 years. So the Ministry of Education currently has, I think, 97% of Christchurch um, preschool children, or 95%. Um, in early learning centres um, with a target of 98% and we still have nine or including this one ten where we either pay the rent or actually put a major subsidy in which is a kind of unusual given the dramatic change in, in this sector that there has been. This sector is actually funded okay by the Ministry of Education. It's not a statement I would make about every um, part of the education sector. Um, but this one is, and I'm not sure why we still have these 10 select areas where we pay the rent or a subsidy on them. So I think it's not just this one, but there are nine others that we need to address as well. Yeah, the history though is that the council used to, um, the council um, owns the land where they're located in their community facilities. They're community run. I, I, so they don't have the same access to the private sector um, resources. Well, I'm not sure. I totally understand why they were there 15 years ago. <laughs> Put most of them there 15 yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah, no, but no, I totally no, understand no, but, it's but, but, but I, I really wouldn't want this to be confused with the, it's not, not yeah, the, grants the, the grants. And the grants, um, I think that would have to be well signalled for a change because a community yeah. organisation can't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The question I really had was around the time frame for this coming back to us. Because what I've heard councillors say is they want to have a wider conversation about. Um, the whole philosophy behind council being involved in early learning centres. And I would see that as being something you do through the LTP because you could actually make the same argument about gyms as well. So we're actually funding gyms through this plan, but actually the private sector will happily fund gyms and, and recreation centres um, and, and likewise swimming pools. So can I just be clear about a time frame for this um, coming back to us in terms of options? So um, I, I'm. Um, the, the, this is going to come back to us, isn't it, as a council? Any decision. So that will be during the course of this year, but it's um, subject to formal consultation as well. But um, in terms of establishing the criteria, um, that would have to be a report to us um, in the first instance, and presumably that would involve some discussion with the local community that uses the facility. Yep. So can you can you can we indicate a time frame? I'd probably need to refer that to um, to, to Jane.
Yeah. But that would require some community engagement first. So I, I would actually suggest that it come back to full council because it is an annual plan um, decision. And going forward. Well, you'd, 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 you'd want to allow sufficient time for community engagement, though, so, may, so maybe maybe I, the next two months. I see. September. By the end of September? Yep. By the end of September? Yep. Yep. Thank okay. You. So a report to Council by the end of September, but I don't think we need to note that in the recommendation. So is there any debate around the recommendation? Well, just to say, um, I think investigating is fine. So obviously when it comes back to Council, we can make... The call if we like the options that have come back we can have that consideration so you know I don't, I don't want to be seen as being supportive of outsourcing this necessarily but I think investigating the alternative service provision I'm happy for us to go away and do that. Okay all right I'll put the motion all those in favour say aye. aye those opposed say no that's carried.